I've got a problem. I'm not exactly sure how we ended up here, but here we are. I have a Bear Alaskan XT, a Botec Chorus S, and a Dart and Consequence, all of which I'm going to shoot off side by side by side today to see which one's going to travel with me to our first tack of the year. Let's rip some arrows and uh, see where it shakes out. Today's shoot off. I'm going to get warmed up with each bow. I'm going to get my marks, make sure everything's center center. Then we're gonna send some arrows and score them and uh, see where they stack up at the end of the day. It's a windy day, I'm gonna try to shoot my best. It'll be fun to get some actual scores and see where, uh, see where it shakes out. The lineup, dart and consequence, 29 and a half inches axle to axle, seven and a half inch brace height. This bow is a sleeper, I think. Don't sleep on that bow today. Bowtech Core SS, a little less than six and a half inch brace height. This has the best 3D sight on it with the XL landslide and the UV smaller housing on the front. Helps a little bit with aim. And then the Bear Alaskan XT, which I probably have the least arrows through at this point. I've been very impressed when I have shot it. I've got no ego. I don't care who wins today. I just want to see which bow I shoot the best. And then we'll narrow it down from there. I'm shooting them all with the same release, Stan Solex, straight up. I did make one little custom modification to the dart in here, and I threw some additional weight on this offset bar. That bar sits to the left, it's an offset bar. Kind of reduces the need for a back bar. I just shot this bow last night with the guys, and I was really pleasantly surprised. First scoring round with the consequence. I'm not exactly sure what the secret sauce is with this bow. I don't know if it's the brace height or just something to do with the design, but for a short bow, this bow holds so well. It's hard to describe, and maybe it's just one of those things where the stars align and something about the specs just works for how I shoot. I haven't had a short bow that I think holds better, but I haven't shot a short bow much in recent years. All right, last arrow of the first round with the dart. Oh, that broke left. I got hit by a little Augustus the wind there, right at the end. Looks like a decent little group. It may seem like a good idea to have a couple bows, and it is fun, no doubt. For purely getting dialed in, it's not ideal because you're, you're mixing stuff up, you're switching stuff, you're changing bow to bow. That's part of the reason I want to get narrowed in so I can dial one in really well. That is two tens, a nine, 29, an eight, 37, and a six, 43. 43 round one with the darton. It is windy today. I don't know if you can see the flow blowing or not, but it's windy. All right, round one, scoring round, Bowtech Core SS. Flagship bow, fancy sight, 31 and a half inches axle to axle, shooting a super fast arrow, because I built a set of arrows for, uh, I thought this was gonna come to tack with me, but I'm gonna find out. I'm gonna take whatever bow shoots best to tack with me. Round one, scoring round. Let's get it. Ooh, that felt good. Elevation was perfect. It's kind of interesting. It's like every bow has a little personality to it. They're just all a little different. I'll be honest, the main thing that drew me to this bow is the ability to tune it right at the wheel. It's the quickest way to move your wheel side to side, which is really cool. And I thought for an amateur like me, that's a nice thing to be able to do. Oh, 
Golly. Try to break off a couple clean ones here. One thing to note as I make these style of videos, I'm a human, so there's human error for sure. And I'm just a guy who likes to shoot my bow. Doing this kind of stuff does get me more prepared, more tuned in with my equipment, more ready for season. It's a good thing for me as well to be in front of the camera shooting, shooting scores and shooting at stuff that matters. Another little high miss. That's round one in the hopper with the Bowtech Core SS. We'll go see how it scores up. My gut instinct is, it's maybe not as forgiving as the Darton. And I don't know if that is just the setup or the brace height, but it feels like when I'm a little more off, like my shots are just a little more off. See how these scores stack up. Definitely a little more vertical dispersion here. 10, 19, 27, 35, 42. 42. Old Fred Bear. I've been pleasantly surprised at how this bow holds and shoots. And this is the first time I'm gonna shoot a real score with it, so very curious to see how it stacks up with the others. First scoring round with Old Fred Bear. Kinda hit where it broke. Arrow hit behind the pin, so that's all you can really ask for. This wind is settling a little bit too. It's kind of nice. <sighs> hit a little left. If we're just being honest for a second, one thing that's gotten a lot better is like my vertical hold on the bow. But one thing that always seems like I'm just fighting just a little bit is my bubble. Like that bow always just wants to creep back and forth a little. And I'm not sure if that's just learning to get to hold better or it's a balance thing. I've really messed around with my bars a lot and I've noticed in doing that, I can get my bow to sit and float better, but there's still just a little bit of that teetering. So I don't know. Couple nice arrows down there. One that got a little awry. It would be kind of cool to show up and shoot a total archery event with a bow that wasn't a flagship bow, wouldn't it? It's gotta perform though. I gotta be good, as good as I can be. Go score those up. A couple pretty good looking arrows. I gotta swap a battery in that action camera too. That's my range partner, my shooting partner. Give me a high five. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good girl. Come on, let's go. So that's 10, 20, 29, 38, 38 plus seven is 45. Round two with the dart and consequence. Try to make five strong shots and see where this thing shakes out. We got the dart and trending again. Well, it's not in the lead right now, but it's got a really nice group going this round. Two more shots. Oh my gosh. 
That was a poor shot. <laughs> that one was on me. Final shot for the darting. Let's go. I might have got a little ahead of myself. I was chirping to Joel how well that group was going and I soured up the last two shots. Anyway, we'll get a total score here and see where, see where we are. So that is 10, 20, 29, 37, 44. Team Botech, time to run it back. Final five. Ooh, that felt good. That's a strong start. Now, when I originally set this up, I was like, oh, I'll go performance because I want the speed. I think my mind might be changing on that because this is super fast right now and the speed's cool, but for shooting a bow year round or putting a lot of arrows through it, I think I'd probably rather have it in comfort. If I was comparing all three bows, draw cycle to draw cycle to draw cycle, it's like Darton's draw cycle, really nice. That bear, close to as nice. And this in performance, it's not as nice. There's definitely a distinct rollover right there. Like that shot felt pretty good and it hit low left. Final shot, Botech Chorus S. Try to make a good one. We'll go check it out. 10, 19, 28, 36, 43. 43. Get him. You're crazy. Final round. Bear Alaskan XT. Five good shots. And uh, we'll see where they stack up. I've got a couple, couple little wind gusts that push me off to the left. Crazy thing about this boat holding its weight today is I, I haven't done a lot as far as trying to rig this out or tweak it. Kind of just got the initial setup done, got it tuned. I think there'd be room to make this a little more accurate. So it's kind of interesting to me. Got the tent surrounded. Two more good shots, we'll get it closed up. Mm. All right, final, final, Bear Alaskan XT. We'll go see where we finish. We have 9, 9, 18, 27, 35, 35 plus 7 is 42. So that gives us Darton 87, Bear 87, Bowtech 85. That's pretty close. Surprised, a little surprised down here. Well, that was interesting. I go into these things with an open mind and I'm just trying to shoot them and see where things line out and stack up. And I guess I'm surprised, not so surprised that the budget bow shot as well as they did. When I'm shooting them, they feel really good. They're holding steady. It gives me a lot to chew on. And I think what I have to do from this one is take it next to the 3D course, make sure my sight tapes are dialed and then test them on the 3D course and just see who stacks out and comes out on top. And 
that's the bow I'm going to travel the, my first hack with, which it's got a really likelihood. It's up. Could be a freaking darton or a bear, which is, did you think that was possible? Yes, I did think it was possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're going to go talk about this stuff in the podcast, probably. It would be cool if you guys wanted to check that out. There'll be a link down below. Hit the subscribe button. I'm on the road to 100,000 subscribers. It would mean a lot to me. And um, another test coming up. We'll get a conclusive which bow is going to come to tack with me. And uh, we'll catch you back for the next one.